right. Now, is this working? Is the audio working? Oh, yeah, it's working. I can hear myself. Okay. Sorry about that. Gotta love it when the OBS resets the settings for everything. <laughs> notice hi charlotte hi mikey sorry about the sound guys i it was definitely not working before should be good now i know the image is a bit blurry but that's the best my camera can do so i hope that's not too bad All right, so what I was explaining when this sound was still kaput was that uh, what I'm currently doing is trying to transform a very cheap reusable bag and a uh, an old pair of jeans to make the reusable bag a bit more sturdy and interesting and also not have to throw the the old jeans in the trash. So what I've done so far is I've cut up the back pockets of the jeans and I'm sewing them onto the bag so the bag now has exterior pockets. Then I'll cut up more pieces of the jeans, like more it's a fabric and cover everything else and also add to the um, handles to make them a bit sturdier and uh, bigger. It's good practice uh, for end sewing though. Well, not though, too. What a wonderful recycling museum. Thank you so much. I hope it turns out okay. My only worry actually is more that I <laughs> like um like I hope I will use the bag once it's you know upcycled. Because I have quite a few reusable bags and my favorite reusable bags are the ones by um Bagu. B-A-G-G-U. Because those things are sturdy. <laughs> They're uh, nylon, but they're the really, really indestructible nylon, and they have like a really big one. Like I can, I can bring back a, a big pack of toilet paper in that, <laughs> and it's super sturdy. So I tend to go for those because I know they are like gonna be um, resistant to anything. And since I work mostly from home, I don't really don't really have opportunities just to go out with. Like a bag like this, I could put my lunch in it, but I don't really have a need for that, so we'll see. So I'm still in the hospital and I have IVs in both hands. Oh no, I wouldn't even be able to do anything right now, so it's fun to watch you. Aww. Do you like sewing, Mikey? Ouch. I 
I'm using this box to raise the height of my project because otherwise it's too low and I'm really like bent over and it gets really painful. And I can use the box to store everything also. I hope you will soon be well, Mickey. Yes, same. I hope you will you will be able to get out soon. Unfortunately, they have let me know that the downturn on my health will be ever present. Oh no! I'm happy today, although hot. Oh no! <laughs> How warm is it? It's a really nice day here. Like, it's not too warm, not too cool. We have just a few of those a year, so. Thank you, Annie. I appreciate your concern. The weather is 95 in New Jersey. Oh, that's warm. That's toasty. Like, it's really weird to think about it in the sense that um, 10 days ago we had a nice storm. <laughs> like, it, there was sleet and ice everywhere and we lost power and it broke so many trees. And now, like, yesterday and the day before yesterday, it was like over 20, 25 Celsius. I can't say that the the weather here is my favorite thing. It's not the worst, but it's, it could definitely be better. Oops. Sorry. Hey, Nicole! Hi! Hello! How have you been? Hi, Carolyn! I'm upcycling a bag and a pair of jeans. Here, here is 12 Celsius sunshine and spring flowers are starting to appear. That's great! 
I saw a couple of crocuses and the tulips are all leaves right now. They're, they're soon going to be flowering too, but for now it's just bundles of leaves. Looks very clever. I love repurposing. Thank you. I love repurposing too. I hate throwing stuff away. It's just I find it difficult to imagine that it's just gonna sit in a dump somewhere or get burnt or you know just like waste. Hi, Lana. Today I'm good. Well, <laughs> I'm I'm sewing a bag. So I'll, I'll show it. So this pocket is um, finished stitching. Um, what I what I wanted to do was to use one of these uh, reusable bag, but you know the really cheap kind with the thin cotton and the s sort of small straps and all that. And I have a few of these, but they're they're just not particularly fun to use. They're so flimsy. And I also had, uh, well, we had a pair of jeans that was, like, um, used up. And both would have ended up probably in trash or something. So I, I felt like I wanted to practice end sewing. So I decided that I would cup up, cut up the jeans and, like, sew pieces all over the bag to make it sturdier and perhaps more visually interesting and to reinforce it so maybe that way I will use it a bit more or if I don't use it at least at that level it's going to be something that maybe I can you know give to someone or instead of having like a bunch of flimsy um, reusable bags that I don't go like I don't reach for those when I need a reusable bag because they're not that big and they're not that sturdy, and I have much better reusable bags handy, so. And yeah, it's a good way to practice uh, sashiko sewing, or just hand sewing in general. I got rid of my sewing machine, because I wasn't using it, and it was, like, taking up a lot of space. So, I got rid of it. That's so funny you're sewing. I just unsewed a brush roll. What is that? But yeah, I feel like um, to be able to end sew is <laughs> like it's not hard, but um, there's still there's a real skill to it to be able to do it like efficiently, quickly, and I'm not very good at it naturally. Like I've known how to sew stuff by hand for years and years, but I always ran into issues and like I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just, you know, going off the super basic idea of what sewing is. But yeah, I started looking into it a bit more and 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 uh yeah, and I found out about uh something that we uh, <laughs> that people outside of Japan called simply boro, like boro, but it's not exactly how we the name would work out but it's this technique of uh, trying to repair articles of clothing and fabric with visible mending because in a way it shows the story of the garment but also it uses this sort of sashiko thread or sashiko sewing um, concept that it's about, about having long running stitches I think does that make sense? <laughs> anyway, I really like the, the the look of that stuff, and I love the idea of repurposing stuff and, you know, transforming it so it doesn't end up in a landfill. Something almost look like embroidery. Yeah, in a way. But it's like embroidery, um, maybe more abstract. 
And it's also quite sturdy. Girls are so cool. They're making stuff out of everything. <laughs> well, I mean, we're, we're all a crafty bunch, right? Yeah, elbow patches. I agree. Oh, a brush roll like that. Okay, I don't know why my brain didn't really connect the, the dots. That's really cool. I have a shoelace right now to wrap around, but I think I want to add a grommet or a snap so my paintbrushes don't fall out. Oh, feel free to, if you feel so inclined, of course, but you can share uh, photos on the Discord if you want. That's relevant to um, a lot of interests. But yeah, so um, the, the, the sort of trend of visible mending is super interesting, I find. And I really like the idea of... You know, it's a bit like kintsugi, if you know what that is. It's basically the art of uh, when you have broken pottery or ceramics or uh, porcelain, you repair the pieces back together with a, a, a binding, in a way, of gold. So instead of having an item that is um, made useless from being broken, you repair it and you make it even more interesting that way. So I feel like visible mending is something like that. In the sense that, like, yeah, you can just, you know, discard a, a, a cardigan that has uh, holes on the elbows, or you can find a fabric you really like or get a, um, a speed weave and repair it with a yarn you like and have it you know, be even more interesting that way. I, th I feel like the concept of throwing away clothes that are um, that have holes in them or that have visible wear is a really recent notion because you know, not so long ago, people would have a very limited amount of, of uh, outfits, and it would be all about you know repurposing, repairing. Like um, if you had a, a sweater that was knitted. Well, if it got to used up, sometimes people would just unravel and try to spin the yarn back together and knit something new with it, or to just, you know, darn the holes and fix it. The legs of the jeans could become a brush one. <laughs> I have a... Um... Oh, I don't know where it is. It's always what happens, right? When you try to... Um... Uh, reorganize stuff you never you can never find where everything is now but I have a pencil case that I made ages ago hold on anyway I'm gonna find it when I'm not looking for it but uh, it's something that I made when I was a kid on my mom's sewing machine and it's it's basically that I think it's a pence leg that I, I sew like clothes on one side and put a zipper and uh, sewed on a, um, a patch and made my own pencil case that way. It's really sturdy stuff, like denim is amazing. Yeah, it's also saving resources. Exactly. We in our family actually unravel knits and knit new stuff from the yarn. Yeah, that that's the, I mean, that's used to be the way to do this. Regardless. Hey, Melissa! And with knitted socks, we sometimes, if it's too much to mend, use the cuff part and add a new foot so we save yarn. Do you have a speed weave, um, Lena? I found out about these not too long ago and I really liked the idea. But it's basically a little tool that is made for darning, and it's I've seen it used a lot to mend socks. It's spelled speed 
uh, weave. I think it's something like S P E D W E V E, like spedweave. <laughs> I don't think I have mine close by, but I can I can sort of like uh, link to uh, examples in the discard later on. I was so inspired by you. <laughs> Got some yarn and we'll mend some socks with holes. I'll let them pile up a bit on top. Yeah. I I fully support this endeavor. I don't have any uh like I, I really went around and looked, tried to find stuff to we to mend. Like this is not exactly mending, but once I'm done with this, I have a a, a pence um hem that I need to like fold up and mend. And I have a t-shirt that has a big hole in the armpit that I need to mend to. And I'm like, I'm looking for stuff to mend. I had this palm oil. I have a different technique I learned from my mother to mend. Oh, really? Ooh. Do you use like a darning egg or a mushroom? I have a pair of gloves to mend to. And it was really funny to look at the utensil cupboard to try to find something that I'll be able to use to mend uh, the fingers. I think that I have handy. So yeah, so these uh, winter gloves, there's supposed to be two of them. Everything is falling. <laughs> so as you can see, the fingers are pretty used up and we we're like, uh, should I throw them away? And I was like, you know what, let's try mending them. And I <laughs> I dug up this old, it's a potato peeler, but we don't use it. So I I thought that the, you know, the handle of it is going to be great to mend. Like I can attach it with an elastic and mend it and then it's going to at least have the right shape. <laughs> <laughs> otherwise there was a thingamajig that i found online that is meant to repair gloves and like and toes and whatnot but it was like 40 pounds which is like 70 dollars <laughs> and i'm like it's just a piece of wood i'm sorry what no I have a small basket that pieces to mend go in, and when it's full, I have a mending session. Oh, that's fun! I'm on my way to an art store right now to spend a gift card. Ooh! That sounds really fun, Nicole. Something funny, my brother does all my darning for me. I am notorious for breaking any kind of sewing machine or apparatus. Well, you need to figure out how to uh, end sew in that case. I don't really enjoy sewing by machine. It's faster and more efficient, but it's, I don't know, I just, eh, I have mushrooms. I have an egg somewhere and it's really obnoxiously like orange and bright yellow, <laughs> but I've never really used it because I don't, um, I don't have uh, socks that I've ever repaired. So I'll show you what I got to when I post the brush also. Yes, please! That's exciting! Oh yeah, knitted pieces are perfect to mend. You can also use your finger with a thimble. Ooh, that's a great trick. I don't have a thimble. But I have thimbles, but they're not that kind of thimble. But I'll keep that in mind. That's a really good trick. Oh my god, my sister gives me private lesson for end sewing. Now I find out. She's a tailor and a friend of her wants to sew by hand and now 
much as a group that that's so cool oh she's a tailor she she's hardcore yeah yeah I, I know some protection but like a thimble is a really good idea but the thimbles i have are not well suited to that endeavor i have um a sashiko this one i cut up myself and i use it now to wax my thread but um Like, these are the thimbles I have. I have a lot of uh, thimbles meant for sashiko, which are palm thimbles because you're supposed to push on the long needle through fabric that way. And I have this one, but this one is uh, partly silicone, and these are for, like, joints like that. This one too, and I have these, but these are, like, leather mostly. So if I wanted to use that for... Um, darning i would probably get you know caught up in the that's what i mean by i i don't have the best thimbles i don't have the standard thimble my my uh, plan to eventually get a standard thimble is to find one in a thrift shop but i haven't gone to a thrift shop in ages So yeah, I anyway, I have the potato peeler. I think it's gonna work out okay. But um yeah. <laughs> My mother is a tailor too. It's a crafty family. Wow. My grandmother was a seamstress in New York City and she worked for Lucille Ball. Ooh. That's so cool. Holy sucks in this house get turned into dog toys. Stuff the holy with other holy. <laughs> oh, that's a really good idea. I bet you could do the same with a catnip and have a cat toy. Otto! Hello! I'm, uh, I'm upcycling a bag and a pair of jeans together to make the bag something more usable than just a flimsy cotton bag and to use up the jeans so it doesn't end up in a landfill. I don't have the most crafty family, uh, but my grandmother was a very fast knitter. She would knit so fast. And it's a skill she learned during uh, World War II because she was in France at that time. And <laughs> um, they were kind of screwed when it came to winter because there was no warm clothes to, you know, find anywhere. So she learned to knit, to knit herself warm clothes. So that's how she learned it. I'm using sashiko thread. It's Olympus sashiko thread, I think. And yeah, uh, I rolled them onto paper rolls, toilet paper rolls. Did your grandma knit secret codes into anything? Oh, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think she was uh, part of any kind of resistance or something. I think I might have her, her knitting needles from then. They're really old and uh, they're like... Uh, brass in color and they're bent and the paint that was on them has peeled in places you know i think she would knit and she would like um i think there's a way of knitting where you put the the end of the needle like in your arm for pressure and and that's how they got bent How's the Olympus dress? I like it. I need to. I have to wax it, so I use this uh, <laughs> this um, tea light, this uh, beeswax tea with tea light, and I like to wax it. Wax it, sorry, because it it um, it holds together better. If I don't if I don't wax it, the end kind of frays more.
I'm editing a knitting video because I was asked to show how I hold my yarn. It's apparently weird, but functional. Ooh! Yeah, I'm excited to see that. Hold on, I need to catch up. That's a great idea to use it. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I know you can buy like special thingies to, um, to wax thread, but the tea light is, you know, cheap. And yeah, I like it. Are you doing sashiko stitching? Uh, somewhat. I'm not able. This is. I think this is just a bit too thick to do the actual sashiko um, running stitch. You know, through a a long distance of fabric with the thimble. So I I go a couple of stitches at a time. But it's it's kind of the same look somewhat. I'm really, I'm trying super hard to uh, use up supplies I already have. For example, like I, <laughs> I wanted to get the super cool um, pins that I've seen Otto use for quilting, but I have a buttload of, you know, regular like safety pins. And I was like, ah, it's similar and I'm not working on super large pieces. So, oh, um, I'll be right back. Just give me a sec. Sorry about that. Yeah, the quilting safety pins. Thank you so much for being here, Mikey. I hope you uh, recuperate quickly.
I have seen some videos on sashiko sewing and it made me laugh because I've done this with the stitching since I was little. My mom and my grandma wouldn't have approved of my technique. <laughs> But it was logical to me. Yeah. It's really fascinating to see uh, uh, like uh, seamstresses, I guess, like people doing sashiko like so quickly and so nicely. <laughs> like all the stitches are super even. Turning the socks, I must think about when I did a fun sock exchange, like art but with knitted socks and another knitter, and we both sent the leftovers to each other in case this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's really nice. I'm loving the way you're stitching in different sections. Oh, thank you. I think it's more visually interesting, right, to have all sorts of patterns, and it's like. There's two thread colors, even if it's very subtle. I have this light gray and this um, more natural color. And I think it's fun. It's it's a easier way to work too because I can just you know cut up a length of thread and use it up in a section and then you know cut up a new length of thread and start a new section and anyway it's it's super enjoyable it's super relaxing I find like I was saying like I this this is just a cardboard box it's because um, I. I would do it like on my desk and it's lower so I would sort of crouch over sorry oops and I tried you know lifting up my work so that my back is straighter and I also use the box to start a project when I'm done <laughs> because why not <laughs> it's just a Masariki uh, cardboard box I've also finished a, um, a second uh, needle booklet for a friend. And I use kind of similar techniques, but I used um, embroidery floss for this one because um, I didn't have like sashiko thread in matching colors. They were mostly the same, basically. I think the embroidery floss has a bit more of a sheen to it, but both are, are cotton. And yeah, so I, I just I quickly put this together for a friend and uh, we'll give it to them as soon as possible. And I, I like 
using up like notions I already have like vintage buttons and bias tape and you know some fun fabrics so yeah that was a super fun project too made me want to you know sew more <laughs> by hand of course Yeah, it really looks like it was meant to be one piece. Like they were always. What do you mean? Uh, Sashiko thread is not particularly special, I think. But it's um, it's usually cotton, and it's a you know it's a a bigger thread, so it's more visual in a way. So I think if you didn't have sashiko, you could use uh, just like embroidery floss. I think it would work. I think possibly embroidery floss is maybe easier to use for if you do cross stitching and you split up the, the floss into strands. I don't know how easy it is to split up sashiko. But... Yeah. Is it a bit like the thin cotton thread? I think so. So I think often the cotton, um, you know, uh, thread or yarn is uh, often has a kind of a sheen. And this, this, this has no sheen. This is really matte in a way. But yeah, I think as long as you use cotton, you, you would, you would be fine. But any, anyway, the idea is to <laughs> kind of use up what you have in, in a sense, so. Yeah, maybe it's treated different. I think the lace thread probably is more resistant to fraying, but I haven't really used it, so I cannot speak from knowledge about it. I often call it like coton perlé, I think. I use it to embroider some rough stuff sometimes. Or add tags to things. Huh. It's a bit like twine. Is that the word for it? Maybe I'm just really not sure what the right word is, but I yeah I know what you're uh, talking about. I've seen those. Uh, they usually come in like like rounder balls in a way, <laughs> with a often a, a cardboard core in the middle.
we went out for the <laughs> the first bike ride of the season earlier today. We had to um, get one of Mr. E's bike tires fixed because he got a flat at the end of last season. Some are thin enough for doing stitching. Yeah, I would definitely use it if I had any. Oh, it went well. I'm probably going to be super sore <laughs> either uh, later today or tomorrow or in the coming days. Because the first, the first bike ride, like my old body is like, what are you doing? What? And it's um, there's a, a couple of hills and like it's not exactly flat terrain around here, so. <laughs> That's extra hard. <laughs> My bike is really old and heavy, so it's really fun when going down a hill because like I'm I'm super fast. Oh, super fast. I'm I'm fast because I'm like like short and heavy, so I go fast downhill, but uphill is another story. We just uh, we went to the um, the closest bike repair shop or just bike shop to us, and then when we came back, we took a longer route through the um, uh, a local park that is really nice. What is the cute little booklet you made use for? Uh, storing needles. You have felt uh, pages in the middle, and you can use it to. Um, Like you can store your needles in it like this, you know, that's the, um, bike seats are ouch. Yeah. I have a decent bike seat, so my, my ass is less sore than it would be. I find it more hard on the arms and the wrists because of the like all your all of the weight being on the arms and on the wrists like this. I often get sorry, I often get numb fingers. I found with the bike seats, if you have a decent seat on your bike, it's going to be a bit painful in the beginning, but if you keep it up, your your butt is going to get used to it. And it, it. I mean, if you're doing a super long ride, it's still going to hurt after a while, but for a quicker, just little rides, it's it's it gets easier. tunnel maybe I think it could definitely lead to it but yeah I tried to be careful with that because it's not you know it's not it's not a great prospect <laughs> it's definitely a nerve issue like it's definitely the, the compression of a nerve in the wrist I think that is responsible for the tingly fingers I have too many joint things. <laughs> I mean, it's not easy. But then again, I don't really help myself, so.
was thinking a little book like that could be used to make practice or examples of different types of stitches. Yeah, I've seen uh, people do uh, kind of like stitching books or embroidery books that are, you know, they would be maybe <laughs> a mix between, you know, those those books for babies that are fabric and they're like um, soft, <laughs> if I can say that. But yeah, it's the embroidery books I've seen, they were mixed between like, it's a bit as if each page had a bit of batting, so it has some thickness to it, but it's a, a patchwork of fabrics and stitches and trims and that kind of stuff. And they're assembled in a kind of book, which is really cool. I've seen this with the thing where one page was a different. Ooh, that's really cool. Probably would work with crochet too. Yep, definitely. It would be quite a thick book though. I think it would be interesting to turn all of these samples into a blanket. I think I saw pattern blankets too and scarves. That's really cool. It's like when people do uh, temperature scarves or blankets too, where every row is a different day in a year, I think. And you associate uh, yarns with the weather, like, um, easy example, this yellow yarn is for when it's sunny, and this gray yarn is for when it's cloudy, and this blue one is for when there's rain, so you end up putting together a blanket or a scarf that corresponds to the weather for a whole year, which is really cool. Yeah, they really look amazing. They're also the same with moods, like a mood tracker, but with yarn. Ooh. How do you choose which one you're gonna put for a, a single day same with weather like let's say a day has changing weather or like rain and then big sunshine what do you how do you do you have a yarn for that like specifically someone did a poop one <laughs> for real <laughs> That's amazing.
Yes, poop tracker blanket. That's amazing. That's... Oh my gosh, I love it. Imagine explaining it to your guests. Well, I mean, it's pretty straightforward, right? You you explain it like, um, oh yeah, it's a it's a kind of a creation based on tracking a specific thing throughout the year. So every yarn you see, every color you see corresponds to a specific, you know. A variable that I was tracking and you're like oh okay well what were you tracking with this one oh my poop <laughs> it's brown as well it's chef's kiss that's amazing I'll have to find it just different shades of brown this is so funny oh my gosh that's hilarious I've mentioned this before, but I have a friend, well, we have a friend, where um, uh, all the gifts, all the gifts I, I give him are uh, poops. Not real ones, but like crochet poops or um, needle felted poops. With, with oftentimes faces on them. And it started as a stupid joke, but kind of became a tradition. Imagine holding your yarn next to the toilet to match the colors. <laughs> you have a, you have a <laughs> kind of a swatch card next to the... I'm glad you said not real poops. Yeah! <laughs> but you, you keep a swatch card of all the yarns like next to the toilet paper. And you're like, oh, when you're done, you can compare. But yeah, and I would, I would, um, you know, wrap up the 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 yarn poops in a, a a clean pet poop bag, which I thought was funny too. So not shaker card poops. What is that? A shaker card, that's the card that has kind of um, a, a 3D window space uh, and you put like loose items in there and then you can shake it. Oops. I lost my yarn. Is the poop is loose? What? Back, sorry, doorbell rang. What did I miss? Not much. Is it your um? Did you get a the delivery? You put on caffeine. 
in the shaker cup. <laughs> what? Nope, don't know who it was. Huh, weird. Never came to our apartment door. Do you sometimes get people who will just ring every bell just to get the door open? And like for us, it's often people who, who want to deliver to a different apartment, but they will ring all the bell just so that someone uh, buzz them in. I never answer the door if I'm not expecting anything, but husband is more happy with the door. <laughs> I'm creating a sugar cup for the poof. That's just a scarf. It's on fire. <laughs> was very quiet. I think I'm going to make a gray one.
different color. Yeah, it's very subtle, but there's a gray and a of white. Oh no, what the Are you following a pattern for these or are you just like improvising in a way? I was trying to start sewing more like real clothing lately. I know I don't personally have the patience for it, but I would love to have like a couple of items like that have been made um, already that I maintain through mending instead of having to make them from scratch because I, I don't have that kind of um, patience or focus. Like the one thing I learned about uh, sewing that really ruined it for me was the fact that you have to follow the right sense of the fabric. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no, tedious. Oh, following a pattern. Ah, oh, bummer. Do you have to frog like all those rows? Crochet patterns are so hard to be honest. I find that with knitting patterns. Follow the what? Uh, I don't remember. I mentioned if you would have to frog your pattern back three rows. One thing I found out about recently is the concept of a needle minder, and I love it. I don't have a real one per se. I have this this bit of bias tape with magnets in it that I had made for something else and never used it, but I use it as a needle minder so that I can sort of figure out where my yarn is all the time. And since a lot of stuff is magnetic, I just put it somewhere and try to remember to put my needle on there when I'm not using it. Because with cats, I'm always terrified of dropping needles somewhere and them being stupid uh, critters and possibly eating a needle if there's a yarn, like a thread attached to it or whatnot. <gasps> I think patterns are kind of straightforward with the rows to me, but crochet goes in circle. Yeah, but see, I, I can understand crochet better than um, knitting. And yeah, Japanese crochet patterns are really nice once you figure out what each symbol means in terms of stitch. I probably should frag it back, but nah, I'm just gonna go. Yeah. I've been drooling over a beautiful Lily Needle Minder by Clover. Yes, I want to see it! Yes, 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 please show me! I want to see it, I want to see it. <laughs> Would it fit with your beautiful pincushion?
Hold on. The pin cushion is the only reason why I haven't bought the clever one. How's, how come? Oh, that's really cool, Anna. The needle book. And the knitting book. Right. Sorry. I'm having technical difficulty with get back to you. <laughs> I ain't no worries at all. Though I gotta say, I've tried the clever Sashikoni dolls and they're not my favorite. So far the ones I really enjoy are these and they're made by Tulip or Suline. They come in a um, kind of a little plastic vial. And what I like of these is that the hole is smaller. Nothing to show because we're talking about them and yours look like a <laughs> yeah um i got the pattern for mine from a an instagram that is named honey folk clothing i think honey folk clothing yeah and um she's very into kind of this uh um it's kind of about not being too fancy about it, I feel like. Everything is very, like, abstract and kind of rough around the edges. And I really like that look. Yeah, uh, sashiko needles are usually quite long. You can have some shorter ones too, but they're long so that you can, you can like, line up a lot of uh, stitches on, on the needle. And then you push the needle through all of the fabric and spread it out and you've made your sort of a line of sashiko thread uh, stitches, sorry. Hold on. Um. Just give me a second, I'm trying to get to that beautiful needle minder. Let's go. Oh, that's so pretty. It's so nice. Hold on, let me... Can I zoom in? 
Oh, and it says Porte Bonheur on it, which is lovely. Look at that. Oops. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's a um, Lily of the Valley, right? The cute little white flowers that's, that have such a good scent. It's beautiful. I love that it's called Porte Bonheur, which is basically good luck charm in English. They would have a they have a a seams ripper in the same kind of look. Dude, that collection is so fancy. It's lovely. a whole range of sewing related items with the lily of the valley design on them that's gorgeous that's so pretty that was amazon japan but i mean oh man how do you even start not wanting the whole range right My grandma really loved the... So I'm kind of split because it's a... Uh, my grandma really liked that that uh, scent too, but so does uh, someone I really don't like. So I'm split between the good memories and the bad memories. I have added the whole range to, into my shopping basket many times already. <laughs> so what else is there? There's a, a seam ripper, there's a needle minder. Do they have a threader? And um, scissors, maybe? I'm curious. It's so pretty. So, do you think you could find it, like, over there at a better price than it is on Amazon? Or if you think the Amazon price is the best? There's a ribbon rope threader. Ooh. A cube of pins. Like pins for um, holding in place stuff, right? A seam ripper. An owl. Oh. <laughs> you're, you're telling me there's a, a stabby thing out there that has that aesthetic on it? Mmm. <laughs> Stamps? Embroidery threader? <gasps> hey! Hey! Oh, right. Era Bay. Or Ira Bay. Hi! <laughs> Sorry! And a funny cross thing that you bend to hold your little ball of. Whoa! Hold on, can I find it? I don't think I can, but I'll, I'll have to look into it later. 
do you know is it is it a special finish like everything looks kind of silvery but it, is it a particular finish oh i sent you a link to all of them oh my gosh oh my gosh this is like equal parts amazing and um And kind of, uh, you know, problematic when a full range of something is gorgeous. Because that means that then you're kind of, you kind of have to fight with getting it all. I seen something on. Uh, ooh. So it says there's a brass ruler. A choice to have this one be brass while everything else is silvery, right? String threader. Oh, it's beautiful. Needle minder. <laughs> the cube needle is so cute. Oh, tiny scissors. <gasps> oh my gosh, the, the lace needle. I don't know if that looks stabby. They're all so nice. Oh, you have stamps too. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, that's the owl. Oh, dude. The embroidery threader are amazing. They're li they look like lace. Closer per oh the crust thing. Huh. Wow. Dude cover why? Oh they have really cute uh, Lily of the Valley paper clips too. Can I just zoom in? No, I want the Oh, it, my phone is being stupid. I can't really show you guys, but... Yeah, it's like silverware and jewelry, I agree. Like oftentimes, well nowadays, if you look at most of the the silverware stuff, it's 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 always a bit, you know, either like not special enough. But I feel like having a whole theme of uh, Lily of the Valley. That's so so pretty. It's such a cute flower, and it smells so good. I think they are probably going to be in season soon, right? They're a spring flower. Yeah. Yeah. You can try copy pasting it. Copy and pasting it. Sorry, Melissa. Copy paste what Otto has put in chat and um, yeah, because links directly from uh, Amazon Japan are um, they they kind of don't recognize the them as full links. Here they're called Maybells because they bloom in May. Oh, I remember it because I think they're the flower of France and the anniversary of France is in May or something. Oh, hold on. Be right back.
All right, sorry. I am back. We saw a squirrel um, yesterday and today that had found a whole bagel. And like the bagel is about as big as the squirrel. And it's really funny to watch it, you know, <laughs> haul its bagel around to eat it. Oops. All right. There's always a, a part of any project that's a bit awkward to position, so it's it's <laughs> easy to work. Do you know what the Discord authentication backup code? Nope. Burning done. It was only two. <laughs> that was quick.
isn't that a thing that you would have uh you know like a two-factor authentication or a backup code that would be for your own account and it would be a specific code or something one sock had a tiny hole only Sometimes I have to update Discord and then look back in. Do you, do you guys use Discord just online or have the app installed? I think so, but it doesn't send me a code on the app and online. Um, but install on PC and yeah, okay. Hmm. I don't remember if uh, Discord, how they send their two-factor identification stuff if they send a code or if they use an authenticator like uh, the Google one. In fact, I can check. Hold on. Okay, so where is my Google authenticator? Okay, so it doesn't seem to be using Google Authenticator. That's weird. Something I've been, oh no, don't, don't, don't say that. I mean, it's... Uh, these things, they're never really straightforward, you know. There's always something. I'm thinking I might change the angle. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. 
Let's go. <laughs> maybe I need to send you more uh, direct messages or notifications, Melissa. Maybe that's the way to go. <laughs> I updated it, maybe I should uninstall and reinstall. Yeah. If it still doesn't work, that's something that could probably possibly help. Oh, that was a good stab. Oh, dude. Ow. Like, the, the needle pricked my finger and stayed stuck in it. <laughs> Ow. That happens a lot. <sighs> Not that bad. Not the worst I've had. You need your thimbles. Yeah, but at the same time, like, I'd need a whole glove. And what you gain in protection, you lose in dexterity. So it's a tough choice. And, I mean, let's face it, uh, a stab is more surprising than painful. Like, you never really expect it, so you go like, ah! Okay, I have, I have a, a sewing-related horror story to share. If you're sensitive to uh, horror stories or bodily harm, <laughs> in a way, um, just mute the stream for a couple of seconds. Okay? All good? Okay, so I, I had a friend who was studying fashion design and she would sew a lot of projects and at some point, I don't know what happened, but she managed to sew through her thumb with the sewing machine. And what happened is that the needle went through her fingernail and hit the bone and split, <laughs> I think. So, she had a fragment of a needle stuck under her fingernail, or thumbnail. She had to go to the hospital, they gave her something to made, make her, you know, loopy a bit. And then they had to tear off the nail and scrape under it to remove the, the fragment of needle. And it's one of the grossest things I've ever heard. I was like, oh my gosh. I, I don't know if you guys have ever experienced that, but whatever is under the nail is super sensitive. So I can't imagine the pain when the, the you know, the meds were off. It's such a terrible um, thing. And you, you wouldn't really expect it from a sewing machine, right? All right, horror stories um, finished. It's good, people, the, the horror story is finished. <laughs> yeah, it's not very lucky. I mean, she recovered fine, but...
My mother thought sewing in Russia in school and one of her colleagues had a similar experience, but nothing got stuck with the machine too. Well, yeah, that that's, uh, I guess, luckier in terms of uh, the whole nightmarish thing. You, you don't expect it, but it's really strong, right? There's a good m motor in there. Hold on, I need to... I think Otto has been locked out of the chat. Otto, are you still locked out of the chat? Oh no, hold on. Great. Is that good? Yeah, that works. I have to leave this on top. Oh, yeah. Hey, no worries. I don't think we have m much longer to the stream left, but I think I'm just going to try to finish sewing this little area and then call it a day. Through the, yeah, it's uh, depending on um, like the denim itself is it's an old pair of jeans, so it's not you know it's it's thick, but it's not that bad. What is really more difficult is if I have to stitch through the printing on the bag and then the denim. That's a bit tougher, but it's kind of why I cannot be super efficiently. Uh, <laughs> doing like the super long sashiko stitches. I think my stitching of this pocket was less successful than the other side because it's a bit... Um, I must at some point have stretched out the... Is this 
stretchy. It's not particularly stretchy, but it feels like it, it's, it doesn't match up, like line up perfectly with the bag that's underneath. But I mean, once it's all sewn together, it's not going to matter, really. I'm not sure I'll have enough thread to finish this area, but thing is, if I don't finish sewing up to the edge, I can, sorry, sew that back later when I add a patch on top. really good practice you will practice a running stitch <laughs> doing this there's no um oops, there's no two way about it at some point uh in the, the future it's not a it's not a plan for now, but I want to try like real sashiko fabric just to get the feel for the thickness and the weave. And if you can actually like be super quick with it. It was so funny earlier, like we're doing laundry, which is why I had to take a couple of breaks to go help with um, with laundry. And uh, the cats, they could tell that soon there was going to be the dried towels. And usually we just, you know, drop these on the bed and the cats like to sleep in them. And they, they knew it was coming and it was so funny. Like they were expecting it. They were really eager to get a good nap in their freshly dried towels. They're still there and it's really funny. Like Pico is sleeping on top of the towels and Scout is under a towel. Yeah, when the thread gets short, you always end up losing it. I gotta say, the thing that bothers me the most is that I have a, a a gash in my finger from having, you know, dry hands. And it's the finger I use for sewing, so I'm always putting pressure on it. And it, it doesn't get bleedy or, um, you know, annoying, but it, it gets painful. But it's like, no, I don't want to stop stitching. <laughs> it's, a relaxing, it's so relaxing watching you stitch. Oh, thank you. It's so relaxing to do too, I feel like. Like a spa day for the kitties. Yep. Oh my god, I have the same one from knitting. Oh, do you think it could be sewing induce? 
No, it's like a big crack in my <laughs> in my finger. Yeah, I'm, I can I can go back. I found a really good uh, hand cream that works for me. I know I mentioned it on um, the Discord because I was pretty shocked, but it. Uh, it's a sample I received a while ago and I was a bit desperate because I had a really bad case of uh, kind of like eczema on this finger and it just wouldn't go away and I saw that I had this sample of um, intensive balm it's called it's from Bioderma so Bioderma Atoderm intensive balm which is a weird way of having it be French and English at the same time because intensive is in English and balm is in French. It's either intensive balm or balm intensif in French. But anyway, it doesn't have any smell. It doesn't smell of anything, which was like the key factor. And also it's, um, it's non-greasy. I use the band-aid as protection. Yeah, that's if it gets like too cracked, I, I will have band-aids. I always have band-aids and I will put one on there. Mine definitely less because I use the spot to push back a needle and it only happens when my hands are dry and probably not elastic enough. Yeah. So yeah, I, and I tried this little sample that I had gotten and I was impressed. Like overnight, it made such a change. Like the skin is impossibly recovered <laughs> from being so messed up and it had been messed up like that for the whole of winter like i tried many creams and nothing worked and then i tried this and it changed right away so i'm um, like i'm fully expecting to end up having an allergic reaction to it because there's no way it can be that good <laughs> and something i can use on the long term you know but yeah and i, w I went and bought a, a larger tube and it's really good. So yeah, if you're unsure, you can maybe ask at your beauty counter. Like this one uh, over here, I can find it at the makeup and beauty counter. It's not on the, the regular shelves. But yeah, they might have samples like this, this one that they can give you so you can try it. And it it it's not like... The composition is a is a scientific formula on its own, but it doesn't have the things that usually make me react in an allergic way, if that makes sense. Like, there's no silicone, there's no perfume. They have a specific cream for hands and, like, uh, cuticles. But this one in the ingredient had, like, perfume as the last ingredient, and I, I don't trust that one bit. So I went with the cream that is more for general use. Like they say, you can... It says, <clears throat> Ultra soothing balm. Very dry, irritated to atopic sensitive skin. And you can use it like... Um, what it says? It says, repairs, restores lipids, anti-itching, face and body. Apply once or twice a day to cleanse skin. And that's pretty much like perfect. Maybe in the pharmacy here. Yeah, definitely. Ouch. It's um, it's a French company, so it, you know, I think I found some of the the company's products <laughs> years ago when I was in a German airport on my way back from uh, Switzerland, and I'm pretty sure they had uh, Bioderma stuff there. So oh, I think you can probably find it in many places.
Yeah, bioderma sounds familiar somehow. It's really, it, it, it's, um, I'm glad. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. I had tried other products from this range before, but I forgot to do the smell check. And turns out it was a product that they say had a light scent to it, but was actually a super strong, um, very like uh, cloying perfume. And I just, I, I couldn't use the product. It stinked. I was like, dude, that's not... Why do you make a range for sensitive skin and have perfume in the products? Which is a rhetorical question because there's no logic to it, but... Ugh. Okay, so that's, that's how I'm going to leave it. And since it's going to be patchwork, there's going to be a patch that overlaps or two patches that overlap here. And I'll cover this up or I'll sew it when I get to it. But I think for now, the pocket is secure and it works. Oh no, what? Otto! I tried a sunblock that it has mint in it. Oh no! Did you did you peel off all over? No. Uh, yeah, I'm sensitive to smells. So I prefer those. Same. Like it's so everything has a scent. Like shampoo, deodorant, uh, creams, all like toothpaste. Everything has a scent. Like um, uh. The, the soap for washing clothing. So all in all, that's way too many perfumes at the same time. So if I can get some things with no scent, I go for that. Yes, I did. How fun. Oh, no. <laughs> Why? What's the... How is mint helping with FPS? Dude. Or SPF? Yeah, SPF. Even laundry stuff. Yeah. And it's so hard to find stuff that is unscented sometimes. Uh, even freaking um, feminine hygiene products. Like, you have to be careful every time you need to buy a refill of anything because they have variants with perfume in it. And, yeah, I mean... Like, let's not be delusional here. The perfume in feminine hygiene products doesn't help in anything. Like, it just doesn't. It's it's the it's the next worst idea after um, <laughs> Lysol douches. That's another thing for another day. But yeah, oof. And the thing was, it this was a moisturizer with sunblock. I tried it because they're normal moisturizers and. Unscented, so I thought it was safe. Oh my god, those scents just give away that you're on your back. <laughs> they do, right? Not only that, but they, they do. You have scented toilet paper? Oh, I haven't seen that in ages. Do you guys remember when toilet paper would be colored? Like you would add pink toilet paper? Yeah, I mean, no grown woman wants to smell like a diaper. And it's always something stupid, like um, a f f clean, fresh smell. That's the name of it. And you're like, what? You know, you know, clean shouldn't smell of anything. That's how you know it's clean. It's that there's nothing on it, you know? We have some with prints, like flowers or random stuff. <laughs> Kitchen paper towels, too. Yeah, I remember seeing these, but I haven't seen any in store in forever. But yeah, like one time, I always, I, I tried to be careful, but there's one time I didn't pay attention and I bought pads that were scented. And it was, I mean, I still wear a mask when I go to the, drugstore so I, I had a mask on and i didn't pick up on the fact that they were the perfume kind and i got home removed my mask unload my bag and i'm like oh shit i went back and i ex exchanged them like they were brand new and open and i had bought them like two minutes before but 
Oh, dude. The smell is disgusting. My parents have always run them ones like chicken. <laughs> That's so funny. But I mean, why? It's just an extra step that is absolutely not necessary. Those scented pads make me gag. They, they smell disgusting. And yeah, everybody who... Like... Anyway, it's just... It's a whole thing and I'm not quite sure. Like, you, you want pads that don't smell... Um, buy unscented one and change them more often. It's not eco-friendly, but that's probably the best way to go about it. Because, I mean, like, dead, dead people and clean scent is not a good mix. And the pads won't smell better after you. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't cover up any smell. It just... Combine the smells. That's the issue. Like, if you want... That's kind of gross. Well, we're, we're all okay with it, I guess, in here. But yeah, if you want a, a pad that don't smell, it's, you need to change it to a new one. Anyway. Yay, feminine hygiene. I can't wait to be done with that stuff. <sighs> Yeah, that's the thing. I don't know if people assume that because it's scented, you don't have to switch it out as often. But yeah, newsflash, it stinks. Awesome topics. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 a, it's a sort of very informative topics because I don't feel like that's something that there's a lot of discussion around with fellow people that have to use these products. So it's interesting sometimes to just ramble about these because you may learn a thing or ten, you know. I have no problem with these, with the topics. Yeah, it's like, um, for the longest time I thought that... Uh, Tampons were just the most painful thing in the world, but turns out that it's only the cardboard ones. If you somehow get something else or a plastic applicator, it's a very different experience. And I feel like that's something that I would have really appreciated um, knowing back when I was, you know, crying because a cardboard tampon was being painful, you know? You're like, oh, no, that's... Just don't don't get those. Get the other ones. And you're like, oh, okay, good. Or, you know, I don't know about you in the chat, but when I first started getting my period, I mean, you go to your mom or to any kind of person in your entourage that uses these products and has experience dealing with it. And... My mom would get me those, the maxi pads, but the one that are like an inch thick, that you basically have a cut up diaper in your pants. And she would regularly buy more of these. And I was like, yeah, okay. And at some point I was like, you know what? Let me get the, the super thin ones next to it that are supposedly cool in performance, but don't feel like I have a diaper up my ass. And uh, yeah, that's also something that you... Either figure out the hard way, or if you're lucky, someone will spare you the experience. Also get the coral if you can. It will at least lighten your periods or most stop them. It's amazing. No one talks about that. Yeah, there, there's a lot, not a lot of talk about um, the other ways of managing periods. We don't have any with applicators to be honest. Yeah, you you <laughs> you guys have the Obi ones, right? And these are these make no sense to me. But yeah, your mom did that too. I don't know why the moms used it. I don't know. I was like, do you want to be miserable? What? Like, I know the my mom is of the age, was of the age that when she started using feminine hygiene products, um, I don't think. Pads were a thing. 
or they were really recent. So perhaps she thought that this was the only option and that the thin ones that are labeled as being just as absorbent, they, they, they are not actually, but yeah, they, they're miserable, the thick ones, and they don't even absorb well. They're just like, ugh, anyway, ugh. I don't know. These, I don't know why they exist still. Like the the maxi pads should just completely be phased out in favor of the comfier ones. I don't get it. At the at the age I'm getting. Uh, but period is really like minimal, so it's much easier to manage. But yeah, dude, as a as a kid, I think some use them for when they're older for incontinence, maybe possibly. But then again, you you I don't know. I'm trying to think in terms of incontinence products. Why would you wouldn't use the thinner ones? And also, they make products specifically for that, so th they might have um, options there that you won't find in pads for um, periods and that are more well-suited to dealing with incontinence. I don't know either. But yeah, the super like thick stuff. And then you get the overnight maxi pads that are like this long, this thick, and... You feel like if you move a centimeter, it's just going to leak all over. Yeah, fun, fun times. <laughs> all right. So um, on this lovely topic, I think I'm going to end the stream for today. And um, yeah, I will keep working on this, of course, because it's been my go-to... Uh, like cool down activity at night, something to do that is just like calming and fun. And um, yeah, there should be a stream next week, but as always, I will um, update with the, the scheduled video regardless. And uh, we will see each other soon, either on the Discord or in the next stream. And I thank you very much for being here today and um, <clears throat> for... Um, Having a fun uh, Saturday, <laughs> a pretty chill Saturday uh, all together. Yes, I will. I will definitely take pictures when it's done. I'm excited to see what shape it will take because I don't really have much of a plan. So, do they still sell the? They do. You can still buy like the really thick ones. Are terrible. Worst. Okay, final note. Worst thing forever. The really thick ones without any wings. Like, are you looking for a leak? Seriously. This is the worst thing ever. The really thick ones with no wings. Like, dude. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. And uh, have a great week. And see you all next time. Bye-bye. Right. <laughs>